Good morning, everybody. Welcome once again to BTL Bass Talk Live, where we're going to talk bass fishing and anything else that I want to talk about, because he never talks about anything else but bass fishing. How are you, Matthew? That's the first time you've changed the opening <laughs> up in seven years. It threw me for a loop. But I know. Uh, you've been giving me grief lately about talking basketball and football well i need to stop because you seem to be going the opposite you just you embrace it i give you grief about nike and you just you're (laughs) you're on a different level today but an absolute jam-packed show actually you have a schedule lined up hopefully (laughs) hopefully things Uh, will go well hopefully it'll all all go well uh uh, first things first, off the top, we, we talked about it a little bit uh, in the first segment of uh, Tuesday's show, yes, which was uh, the Costa Series angler, co-angler, uh, Nick Kaler, who had been missing on Lake Okeechobee since Thursday. Yesterday, FLW came out uh, with a statement uh, along with, I think it was the FWC uh, or the Sheriff's Department right, down right. there in, in Florida that they did uh, recover his body. Yes, uh, yes. It's just an unfortunate situation for everything, and and we talked about how this could lead to some safety changes. Obviously, just perusing uh, the internet and some message boards, some people are already pushing for uh, kind of the beacons the beacons on the life vest. So, um, I guess best case scenario in a horrible situation that they were able Probably. to recover his body his family gets some closure exactly and i think that's the big thing there i think both the family and everybody involved with this very very unfortunate situation that i think there will finally be some closure with this situation and uh obviously our thoughts are with both uh the the organization and and more importantly the family that is dealing with this situation and uh hopefully things can somewhat uh develop and, and and we can learn from this situation and uh we can move forward i mean that's all you yep. can do uh, the last thing about this then is the gofundme account that was set up uh, obviously less than a week ago for this yeah. and it had the goal of raising fifteen thousand dollars and and as of right now 905 it is up to sixty five thousand one hundred forty nine that's impressive that that is real impressive so uh our thoughts are with everybody involved in that situation and like i said hopefully now uh, we can progress. It will never be the same, but hopefully everybody involved in this business can progress toward uh, moving forward and moving on. All right? All right. All right. Good show today, man. We're going to have uh, Wesley Strader on, and you have an interesting clip that you put together from a previous show that we're going to run. Yeah, back before, in November. Before we go to Wesley. It was before he had made his announcement of whether he was going to fish <laughs> the Elite Series or stay on FLW Tour. Yeah. And uh, towards the end of the show, it was getting towards that time, you know, that late November period as to whether they had to declare for the Elite Series or not. Um, and we uh, both gave our opinions on what we <laughs> thought he would do. Yeah, so we'll, we'll cue that up. And then uh, a very special guest, Matt Florentino from AFCO. We're going to have him on talk about Bass Boot Camp. Yeah, this is a cool, uh, this is a cool opportunity where they are actually, uh, I guess, going to get behind an amateur angler and, and cover his, his open fees and Mm kind of give him the possibility to make the elite series and document the whole thing and document the whole thing it's a youtube of uh uh, video contest a one minute video so we'll play the kind of promo there that uh that russ lane put together uh for for afco and then have Mm -hmm. of mac come on and talk about afco's entrance into the freshwater fishing market they've been in the saltwater business forever over 60 years uh and they're very uh uh conscious of protecting of uh, the fisheries, yeah. of giving back to the environment and protecting the environment, and uh, also just came out with a nine angler uh, freshwater team. Team. Uh, Jason Christie is on that. Who we just had on Tuesday. Yeah. So uh, he, Matt, also sent me. I mean, if you see the promo banners, I think those are called calico bass that he's got. I, he, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah anyway, yeah. they look awesome. I want to go catch one now. Yeah. They. Uh, you can catch them in Southern California. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where, I, I, that's where I think they're located. I caught one before when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. That was when my dad, we used to go rock cod fishing. I think he, Matt might be from Cal. I wonder if you guys grew up as neighbors because you are a California kid. I am. What? What is this? What? Uh, somebody on the instant feedback is telling me something. I don't know. I have to check that out. I don't really understand that. Okay. 
Uh, anyway, and then we're going to have, hopefully, one special guest. At the, uh, oh, you got of, that set of, up I, for the I, show? I, I, yes. I hope we can have this person on. Okay. We might run, we might run over today. And, and, then, and then we have a special announcement moving forward with uh, a, a couple of things that are tied into some of the stuff that we've been working on. So uh, what do you want to do? You want to play the straighter video before we go to a break? Yeah, we'll play it right before we go to the break because Wesley won't be able to hear it. He's actually, what's he getting his tires done? Yeah. Getting ready to new tires, new tires. Getting ready to go on the road, but yeah. this is the uh, so we're having Wesley Strader on. He's obviously fishing the Bassmaster Elite Series. He will be at Lake Martin as a Bassmaster Elite Series pro uh, in early February to kick the season off. But this was back, I believe, November fourteenth, uh, when Mark Jeffries and myself we're hypothesized really wrong <laughs> as to what Mister Strader would be doing. So we're going to play the clip and then uh, see what Wesley has to say about our incorrect prognostications. All right, here we go. We will be back after the break with, with, with geez, I can't even talk today. Wesley Strader. start that sentence over Woo! again. <laughs> All right, check it out. Number of teenagers. Any news on Strader? No. I didn't figure there would be. <laughs> I mean, really? What, I mean, what, what would he have? Yeah. What? I mean, why not just let the fishing world think? Oh, we're thinking all right. You might tell the people what we're talking about. Uh, so whether Wesley Strader is going to accept his Elite Series invite. Now, I have no idea. I haven't talked to anybody. My gut says, we'll say a word on three. One, two, three, on what we think our gut says about okay, him. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, so whether Wesley Strader fishes the Elite Series. One, right. two, three. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not making the move. Not making the move. No, we have no idea. That's just now, our, uh, our other, hypothesization. It, 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 once again, the power of the pen. If somebody sits down and writes a fat check... How big would that fat check have to be for him to make the move? Is it about money? Is it a loyalty thing? Here's a, what would be his I think bottom there's, line there's price. There's definitely to be able a bottom line price just based on when we had him on the show and he talked about how big of a carrot the Bassmaster Classic was. Yeah. The most versatile fishing machine on earth, unparalleled resolution and clarity, with more agility, lightning speed, and brute strength. HDS Carbon takes rapid response performance and screen technology to an all-new level. Maximized power, maximized visibility. See Structure Scan 3D, new dual chirp sonar, new live network sonar, and more mapping options, all at the same time and faster than ever before. depend on hydraulic jack plates to get the best out of their boats. Do what they do. Demand Atlas performance. Atlas gets you from the bottom to the top in less than eight seconds, even with the big four strokes. And when you gotta turn right around and get that heavy load back up in rough water, Atlas's innovative design and American-made components will get you there with confidence. I'm Ot Depot. Just look for yourself. There's an Atlas jack plate on just about every professional's boat. The Atlas hydraulic jack plate. You can depend on it. My rods look different because they are different. Every rod is built by the pros and for the pros. When you pick up a white ducket fishing rod, you're getting a cutting edge rod, one that's truly pro driven with the actions you need for every bait category you fish. I put my name on it. It's my promise to build you a great rod you can count on. Ducket fishing, micro magic, macro magic, or white ice. Try them, they work. Gill that I've used for the last five years has been a far superior product than anything else on the market. The main thing that's really important to me is me being dry. I've been wearing Gill suits now for three years and never once have I gotten wet. The Lowrance Elite 7 Ti. Why does it lead the pack? It's simple. More bang for your buck. Use Elite 7 Ti with the all new Total Scan Transducer and you get all of your sonar from a single transducer install. That's broadband sounder, chirp sonar, side scan, and down scan imaging from one transducer. Now that's something to chirp about. Elite 7 Ti. 
premium features have never been so affordable. I'm looking for signs before practice even starts. Crossing the bridge, I'm checking for current. Is the lake up or down? What's my water color? Bird activity tells me where the shad are before I ever launch my boat. <laughs> Sometimes the best things hit me right in the face. The pesky biffle bugs. There's always a hatch on your lake. Made in America by Jean LaRue Lures. Dang bug juice, it's everywhere. When I talk about Sunline, I think of one word, confidence. Sunline FX2 is what I use for all of my frogging and flipping. SX1 braid, which braid plays a little big part in, uh, in fishing line. Shooter, I'm gonna use in those close quarter deals, like flipping and pitching. One of my favorite techniques in fishing the tournament trail is to fish offshore ledges. We have taken the, the questions out of the equation. Take my word for it. It works. It works, dude. All right, we are back on a Thursday. It is freezing outside once again. Dude, I was in shorts yesterday. Yeah, but it was still freezing. You just it decided to wear shorts. You haven't been insisting in how warm it was yesterday, and it, it was, was cold. It was 65. Okay. I, I, well, you were working away in the studio yesterday and didn't realize that it was, yeah, it was like 60-something yesterday. Yeah. It was shorts weather in December. Come on, man. Today, uh-uh. Yeah, and you really would like to be out on Thunderbird today with 60-mile-an-hour winds? Absolutely. Are you crazy? No, it's not. I mean, no, not Dude, if it was blowing into the... I mean, there's like three spots you can catch them on. So if it's <laughs> blowing into mile that... An hour winds, it's not 60-mile-an-hour winds. That's what they're it's calling for. To. It's 30 to 40 right yeah, now. Yeah, no. Well, there's a reason why I'm in the studio. Yeah, but you told me earlier you wished you were out on Thunderbird. No, oh, that, was be before, today. that was before it started blowing that hard. Oh, you didn't realize that it was going to blow to 60, did you? No. You like to exaggerate the weather conditions. I, I'm a That's weather like fan. That's like F1 tornadoes. <laughs> no. All right, let's put a bet. Let's bet. I guarantee you, I trust the weather people here in Oklahoma. That it'll hit 60? That it will hit. There will be gusts. I'll go lunch at, at uh, least I'll go, 60 today. I will go lunch at uh, Chick-fil-A. Okay. Next week. Now, if I see it, if I see it, I'm going to... Like take no, a picture of yeah, it with your phone Yeah, that's fine. You can go back like and that. do observed conditions. Yeah. I mean, they document that stuff. All right. Oklahoma City metro area. I'm not talking about out in Guymon or okay, yeah. Miami yeah. or something like that. Oklahoma yeah. City metro area. Yes. You're good with that? Yes. All right, Chick-fil-A. Woo! I couldn't talk there for a little bit, dude. You did. I was I, getting I a little a, well, worried. I took a sip that... of this, and it just it went down the wrong way, and I couldn't talk, and it was just a mess. I'm sorry. All right. Jam-packed show today, folks. We are uh, ready for our first guest, live via Skype from a very unique location. We've never done I this I guess before. he's preparing for the season. I mean, isn't this a key? You got to get there. You got to get to the lake before you can cash checks. Yeah. And this is a critical part of getting to the lake. All right. Let's bring him in here. I can get him queued up. All right. Wesley, you there, man? Yeah, I'm here, guys. What's up? All right, very unique place, man. You're uh, getting a little work done on your vehicle. Uh, yeah, you know, you can't you can't roll the tournament's on rims. So I had to have some tires put on, you know. Uh, the, the Fred Flintstone days are out. <laughs> I, I think don't pedal that fast no more. Right, you don't even know who Fred Flintstone is, do you, man? Yeah, that's a classic. Everyone knows who Fred okay. Flintstone Just is. Check All right, man, yeah. we, are, we are getting close, Wesley. Uh, we ran the clip. Beforehand, we had you on the show back in November, and Matt and I both said, nah, nah, he's not doing it. And lo and behold, look, he just made us look like a couple of idiots because, yes, you are venturing to the Elite Series. And uh, I, I just, I, I'm really curious why, man. Well, you know, I didn't, uh, at first, I didn't really know what I was going to do, and I was kind of holding out. And then finally, uh, Bass announced the schedule as far as the. Uh, the Texas Toyota Bass Fest, and that was going to be at Lake Austin, which is where my title sponsor, their home is in Austin, Texas, on Lake Travis. And uh, that was kind of the deciding factor. You know, these guys, you know, three years ago, they decided to jump on board and, and support me and what I do. And I, I felt like I owed it to them, the owner of the company, and, and, their, and their, their, their business there to represent them in the state of Texas. And that's one of the reasons why I chose to, uh, to, to switch. To swap over, kind of, 
kind of kind of glad I did. Now you know uh, when they announced the field for FLW, I was like, wow, that's a that's a that's a big field. So I'm kind of kind of excited about this year. You know, smaller field. I ain't gonna say stiffer competition because we all know that the FLW has uh, is great anglers and uh, as, as long as, as as well as BASS. So uh, just looking forward to the challenge, and I'm ready to go fishing. So are you gonna feel more pressure? I mean, you're one of the first guys we've had on that's actually said this is this is a lake. One of the reasons why I'm going to to switch over. I mean, do you, are are you going to uh, you gonna have knots in your stomach and lose sleep over the the Travis event there, Wesley? No. Uh, those those uh, sleepless nights were gone about uh, about ten years ago. I don't have none of those sleepless nights unless maybe I'm leading the AOY and I choke and fall on my face here at, uh, at, at Lake Chickamauga. So that's a that's the most <laughs> pressure I've felt in a while. So uh, I'm good. So, talk a little bit about uh, just the preparation that you've been doing. You obviously have the camel on. Are you a woods guy? Are you a water guy all winter long? Uh, I mean, the stuff this thing's coming up in, well, we're exactly a month away now from the start of the season. Are you one of those guys who likes to get prepared? We had Jason Christie on Tuesday, and he's like, man, I get prepared, and then I fish my butt off, so I'm in game shape. Are you one of those guys? Uh well, I'd like to say I, I, that's what I've been doing the last three or four days. I'm getting, you know, trying to schedule, get my boat wrapped. My boat, my new boat should be in here and <clears throat> should be in here today. And I got to take it to North Carolina to get it wrapped and, you know, just working on tackle, getting things reorganized and stuff like that. But I, I can't say that I'm that. I, I stay in the woods quite a bit. I, you know, between deer hunting and duck hunting and, you know, doing this and doing that, it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of hectic. You'd think in the off season it'd slow down, but man, it it, it just speeds up. Do you not like have a burning desire to be out on Chickamauga? I mean, they're catching like fourteen pounders every other cast out there, Wesley. Have you not been reading the news? Listen, I had I, I had the I want to go fish so bad yesterday that it was unbelievable. It was sixty five degrees here yesterday. The sun was out. It was you know partly cloudy, sunny. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to go really bad, but I had a lot of things pressing. I had to get, I, I've sold my boat. I'm trying to get it prepped for the guy that bought it. And, uh, you know, it's just one of them things. I called dad and said, that's why I go later. And, you know, everybody wants to go fishing until you call. And they're like, oh, I can't go. Or, or well, you never called ask me to go fishing until you call. And then they don't want to go. So, you know, luckily they bailed out and I got stuff done that I need to get done yesterday. And that's the story of Jeffries and I's relationship. <laughs> It, it, we have to plan 10 fishing trips before he finally agrees to go on one. I'm a busy man. You're too busy shopping at the Nike factory outlet. <laughs> I'm a very busy man. Hey, Wesley, let's talk about 2018 now. Obviously, with the schedule the way that it is, are you one of those guys that when the schedule was established, hey, I've got to get out there, I've got to practice, I've got to get some time on the water with the schedule set up the way that it is or are you a guy that just shows up for official practice and go okay let's get after it you know I, i'm the guy that just shows up and you know fishes during practice but there is one there's probably one two two places that i will go look at before we get there and the only reason i'm going to do that is because i've never seen it never know what to expect and one of them i kind of feel like i'd be comfortable there but it's uh it's one of those places that it's going to take some you know, driving around to be able to figure out where you can go, where you can't go. I don't want to waste two and a half a, a day of figuring out where I can go, where I can't go. Is is the Sabine River? I'm going to go. You know, when we get back from Lake Martin, I'm probably going to go to the to the Sabine River and you know just ride it, just so I can know what areas I can go into and what areas I can't go into because it's kind of a vast area and, and expansive. So um, you know, a little tricky to get around, I think. All right. The other one, the other one would be the uh, the lake in South Dakota on the Missouri River. I can't even pronounce it. Try it, because we've been trying it for months. <laughs> Try it. Let's hear your best shot. Oahe. Oahe. I I actually received an email oh. from somebody. That, Is it Oahe? I and I don't remember. Yeah, I got the same email. It's yeah. like he like phonetically spelled it out for yeah. us. Hey, uh, I, uh, on oh, the hey. I we have no idea. Why? All right. On the instant feedback, John in Kentucky wants to know, how do you think that Kentucky Lake is going to fish in early May? I think it will be like it always does. It's just going to – it just depends on the water level. You know, if the, 
if the water's up in the bushes, I think it'll be a, a, a bush-dominated event. If it's not in the bushes, the guy's going to, you know, you're going to be there. There's still going to be some fish spawning. There may be a lot of fish spawning with the winter that we've had. You know, it's been really cold. Uh, the waters have gotten down into the 30s, so it's could it could play out to be a spawn event. You know, a lot of fish. It ain't. I don't think it'll be one anywhere near offshore. So it'll be a it'll be a bank beating tournament. Really? Yep. Hmm. There you go, Matthew. Yeah. Right. Do you like uh, not starting the year off in Florida, or do you? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not. I don't mind Florida because you're here. It's winter time, and you usually start there. I don't mind that part of it, but Florida is one of those things that uh, over the years you've got. It's something you have to learn. You just don't go to Florida and start catching them. It's, uh, I mean, when you first get, like, say, Okeechobee, the first, I remember the first time I went there, it's, uh, I thought I was going to catch a bass ever cast because of the, you know, just the way it looked and everything you'd ever heard. And it's not like that. You have to, you have to find those areas. And the, the biggest thing I've learned over the years is don't, don't run around like a chicken with your head cut off. You find an area and you stay in it because at some point in time, the, the bass are going to feed during the day. You just got to find the, that area and stick with it you can't run all over the place so i have kind of a love-hate relationship with the 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 waters in florida we are starting in alabama so that'll be a slight difference (laughs) spotted bass and cold water yeah yeah but see i'm used to that yeah so i'm okay all right all right well we have a big announcement that we're gonna make now oh you're making this announcement too yeah oh okay all right uh Uh wes Wesley knows, and uh, for those people that he has seen on the Bass Zone, our new feature called One on One Live, we are going to announce today our very first one on one is going to be Wesley Strader versus Gerald Swindle. What do you think about that, Wesley? Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm excited about it. Uh, I can't wait to hear what he has to say on camera about me. Uh, I always got something to say he's, he's he's never a dull moment around him so and even if he don't know something he'll just make it up that's just the way he is so it's going to be what two halves two 90 minute periods an hour gonna, and a half in length they're going to get an hour and a half to practice live camera in each boat correct and split screen the whole thing like we did with hallman and, and yes. goodwin on lake thunderbird except wesley strader and gerald swindle yes it's going to take place on february 12th which is a Monday, February 12th, on Lake Logan Martin. Not Lake Martin, but Lake Logan Martin out of Pell City. So, uh, very excited about that, Are you going to go pre-practice, Wesley? Why, no. I <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't wait to tug on some big old spotted bass. So, that thing's got them in. They, that thing's been on fire this fall, from what I've heard. Very nice. All right, now it's going to be MLF style. What's the minimum length on Logan uh, Martin? Do you know? Well, we could let Gerald's be 14 inches and mine's uh, 10 inch, 12 inches. <laughs> All right, we'll figure that out. But it's MLF style, total number of, of fish and weight caught during the first half and the second half, total weight, and we have the winner. And uh, we've got a nice little wager that is going to take place on the side between you two. So uh, I think I think you should add a new rule. I mean, really, I do. I think for every curse word that is dropped, it's a two-pound penalty. I know who would end up winning that. Who would end up winning that round? <laughs> that would be an interesting. That what would we have to supply you with? Just a sheet of curse words? Yeah. Let's, just, <laughs> let's say the four or five major negative. Uh, curse words. Who would win? The worst ones you could think of. Wow. I mean, I've seen both of you guys on camera, and I haven't remembered any just torrid no. outbursts. No. Well, that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't, but Swindle, he would he would lose his cookies. He would he would probably, uh, he would spout off some words that uh, would make a preacher blush, you know, or something. <laughs> Basically, if he got behind or he started breaking his, you know, some this things wasn't going right. He, he's liable to say something bad. He's a changed man over the past year, though. I mean, he's he's calmed down. He talks about how he's slowed. He's he's matured as an angler. He, uh, you know, I'm just gonna say, uh, wolf in sheep's clothing is all I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. All right, we're we're really excited about this. Uh, I do want to get to one more question on the instant feedback. 
uh, I believe it was Josh in Missouri wants to know, what are your goals this year with your first year in Bass besides obviously qualifying for the Classic? Uh, you know, the goal is to win every single thing that you can win. That's the way it's always has been since day one. And uh, since I'm not in the Classic this year, uh, it's just, you know, you know, ALY is always on everybody's mind. I mean, that's that's the goal of every angler is to win ALY. And, you know, I've never done that except in, you know, the lower, like, say, the, you know, the Costas or the, uh, or you know, the smaller, the, I wouldn't say smaller, but, you know, nothing not in, on the major level. So I, w- I would like to accomplish that in my lifetime before I go to meet my maker. Uh, so that's, you know, that's the goal, to win every event that you can and, you know, be there at the Classic at the end of the year. All right, very nice. Well, you talk about the win, and I believe your tour win was in uh, early 2000s, right? Like 2002? 2002. 2002. Uh, and then it's obviously known, uh, I know Pete Robbins has written some stuff about your uh, consistency, and the guys over at FLW have written a lot about how consistent you are as far as top tens and cash and checks and qualifying for or cups and all that. Um how difficult is it to win at that tour level? Because you take a, a guy like you, who's obviously a, you know a top tier angler, and then look back towards that that one tour win that you have. I mean, it's got to be ris- ridiculously tough. Man, it's it's just like uh, I, I don't know how to explain. You know, I've had several chances to win again, and you know I you know like I've had I think I've had like eight seconds, and it's just. It's just so dad blame hard to win, man. It's just, and and as 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 we evolve, you know, you know, with YouTube and co anglers and, and and people just learn at a much faster rate now than they did, like say when I started out. It was so much harder because you know what I learned that I didn't know was like, for example, fishing Jerry Ryan's and and things like that, where I would we would be paired with say, I, I fished with Gerald Swindle's daddy one time. I fished with. <laughs> You know, I fished against Gerald and Andy and all them on the, on the not, this is before, you know, FLW was in existence. It's, um, you know, it's, that's how we learned. And, or you went fishing with somebody else that knew something that you didn't know. And I learned a long time ago that that's how you, that's how you learned. You fish, you fish with a lot of different people. Even if somebody wasn't as good an angler as you, or you think you wasn't as good as like you learned something, you know, you learned something from everybody you fish with. But with, like I said, with today's technology, you, you can you can Google anything you want to and learn how to do it. And but there's still it comes that you know application of being on the water to do it. But I think that's one of the why is it, why why it's so hard to win now. There's just everybody the competition level is just it's off it's off the chart. All right, we have three questions on the instant feedback, and then we're going to let you go, Wesley. Uh, the first one is from TJ in North Carolina. Uh, he wants to know, do you have anything that you're going to need to hide when Bass Live is on you this year? Uh, no. No, I ain't going to have nothing to hide. There you have it, He's got nothing. He's got nothing. Nothing to hide. All right, Brian in Philadelphia wants to know, what is the one event that you're least looking forward to this year on the schedule? Um, probably the um, the the – Chesapeake Bay event. I've been there before, and it wasn't it wasn't a lot of fun. You know, I fished a uh, an open there. It was it wasn't a lot of fun. So that's probably the least the one I'm least looking forward to. All right, and then finally, Mark in Minnesota wants to know uh, what are your thoughts and did you enjoy Major League fishing? You know, I, I will say uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed Major League fishing. What Major League fishing has done for me is it has just reinforced that instinct in me to just go with my gut and that's what major league fishing is all about you go with your gut you go try it if it don't work you move on you do something else so that's just instilled in my you know reassured my decision making you know is is to trust in my gut and doing what i think you know at the time i should be doing you talk about decisions and all that and you touched on it a little bit and not i not uh don't want you to get into the whole co-angler debate and all that but i mean you're gonna have a guy sitting there watching you fish now uh which you had with kind of a marshal for the referee in major league fishing but now you're fishing in the tournaments now you fished a lot of days threes and fours 
by yourself in the FLW tour. But is that something uh, that's going to change your game plan or that you're kind of looking forward to if you want to sling one out behind the boat or sit on a school or get off a school? or I mean, you mentioned how you learn from co-anglers too. Yeah, it's a... Uh here's what I'm looking forward to. I, I've never had, in all the years of fishing FLW, I may have had one or two bad co-anglers. I mean, there, I, I, I have nothing against co-anglers. I, I get it. But it's that thought of, you know, like going into a creek and you having to, you know, I won't say defend water, but you're worried about the guy casting across to the other side of the creek. You're not going to worry about that now. That's that's one of the things that I like about this. You're not going to have to worry about that. And it's all going to be on you. I mean, you're not going to get a clue from your co-anger if he starts catching them behind you. And that's that's the part that I'm looking the most forward to is being able to just, you know, say, you, say you're on a big school and you're like, you can get off of it and leave it and not worry about it. I'm not going to sit there all day and I'll leave. All right, this is pretty funny. Jimmy on the instant feedback wants to know, do the people at the tire shop know what the hell you're doing? <laughs> they <laughs> all, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm on this uh, souped up souped up tv show from oklahoma right now talking to the m and m show and uh I was like, m&m, yeah yeah m and m so they're they keep coming in and wonder what's going on i will say you're the first guy we've ever had live via skype who just has the word bacteria and mold directly <laughs> behind you just turn around and look at the side it's just a bacteria and mold right there Right there, on the, right underneath, right on the lettering, right, but <laughs> literally right by your head, but right by like your eye level. It says back to. That, that's uh, that's so you'll change your uh, filter. I know the air filters are flying off the shelves now. <laughs> this yeah. uh, it's the biggest sponsor plug we've ever had in the I history know. of the show. That's pretty funny. All right, that's great. That's good stuff, man. Wesley, thank you so much for taking time out. Uh, busy, busy time for you, but uh, appreciate all your support and. Really looking forward to seeing what you can do on the Elite Series this year. Well, I and know what he can do on the Elite Series. I said I'm looking forward to it. I'm I looking know. forward to it, his success that he's going to experience on the Elite Series. And, obviously, going one-on-one with Mr. Swindle. So, uh, fun I, times, I'm, man. I'm so excited about this year. I'm just, you know, all during the hunting season, that's all I can think about was fishing and and that usually don't happen. I'm usually trying to get my mind off fishing, but this year it's been the exact opposite. I'll be sitting in a tree stand thinking about every lake we're going to and what we're going to be doing, what I might be doing. So I, I'm pretty fired up and excited and uh, can't wait to get the year started off right. All right, good stuff, man. We'll talk to you soon, Wesley. Thanks, guys. You have a, have a good day. All right, you too, man. See ya. See ya. All right, there you have it, Wesley Strader. And uh should be a pretty cool match. Between mm-hmm. him and Swindle. All right, now, I'm going to try and pull this off. I, I, I already know we're going over. So just go ahead and plan on that. Okay. Now, let me see if I can pull this off. So is there anything that you could talk about while I'm trying to get this set up here real quick? Well, I'm trying to figure out. Oh, I see what's on your cell yeah. phone there. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll do it live here. This will take This will take 10 seconds. We're making a... Is this a cold call or is this set up? A semi-cold call? Uh, hang on. No, it's it, this one is set up. Oh, the okay. next one we make is not set up. Okay. Well, I see. Uh, I see on your cell phone it says uh, it says G Man's cell. Oh, you just gave it away. Well, it'll, you'll, people will know in twenty seconds as soon as oh. you punch in the numbers. It's like there's no mystery now. I was trying to build it up, and you just oh, you did you a good job. You know, you did a good job of building it up. Let's see if this will work. Let's see. Does he know he's going to be live yeah. right off the hopper? Yeah. Yeah. Because you never know how he's going to answer the phone. <laughs> if he answers. If he's answer. I got a text from him. He said, I'm ready. He's working on his cars. What today. is with the, the- vehicles? Wesley Strader's getting the, the oil of the tires. Swindle's working on the cars. Oh, come on, man. Your call has... All right. I'll try again. Let me try one more time. Yeah. Here, let me uh, let me do this. Because uh, we could take a break, hit him after uh, we catch up with Mr. Florentino. Uh, let me try one more time. Oh, you think he didn't answer because of the... Uh... I told him that, though. Right. 
Let's it try. shows up as an unknown number when right. you call through the system. Yeah. yeah. Let's try one more time. You might think it's a. <laughs> Mark in Minnesota. Mark in Minnesota. Uh oh. Uh oh. Gerald. Hello. Gerald. He sounds out of breath. Yeah. Are you all right, man? Yeah, Dude, I'm you're live. Up. You're uh, you're you're on BTL here, man. Are you all right? You sound like you're out of breath. Yeah. I'm, I am, guys. I'm putting a bumper on my truck, and it just <laughs> a bumper and a grill in my Tundra, and I had it on a jack, and I was trying to get the nut. <laughs> <laughs> but I took a break right there. What y'all doing? All right. Well, we just had Wesley Strader on BTL, and uh, we made the announcement on the show that our first one-on-one -on -one live is going to be Wesley Strader versus Gerald Swindle. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, you know, Alabama, they dominated Tennessee in football, so I don't oh. think they don't need it to stop up there where we had it, does it? Wow. <laughs> I'm just – I mean, after the national championship game, I woke up craving pineapple or not. I mean, I think Wesley probably did too. I mean, I'm just saying. I feel like Alabama's going to be okay. All right. Now, How about that? The, the venue is going to take place in Alabama. We made the decision we're going to have this one-on-one -on -one live between you two on Lake Logan so got, Martin. Not Lake Martin, but Lake uh, Logan Martin. We're going to go out of Pell so City. Yeah, local. And, I got the I got the home field advantage on it. A, a, a Logan little bit. Martin. But he said he said he's going to jack them pretty good, man. You know, Wesley always catches them pretty good. You know, Wesley. You know, he he catch them. But did you tell Wesley what the really first prize was? <laughs> I did not. I don't even know it, this. Here's how it's, here's how it's going to go down. If I beat Wes. Red got to kiss me on the cheek and say, roll time. That's right. <laughs> With his wife, little Red, going to do a live pucker up on the cheek with one big old roll tie. Wes, that's what's on the line for you. I mean, you might want to retire because this little Red is not going to like screaming roll tie. Wow. All right. So uh, huh? so it, it's set up, man. February 12th is when we're going to do it. Now, let me ask you this, Gerald. <laughs> with this new thing that we're doing, is there anybody out there – that if you had an opportunity to call somebody out and actually go to battle with them on the water, who would that be? Oh, my God. There's two, two things that jump to mind, okay? I mean, if, you, if we're just fantasizing about matches, like if a man could just go pick somebody, I'd like to go against Watson head-to-head -head and go for first place, all the rods in the boat. So if I show up and beat Watson, I get his fishing poles. He shows up and beats me, he gets mine. Now, that would be my first one. <laughs> wow. I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, that's confidence. Don't I mean, you're a notorious junk fisherman with at least 40 rods and reels in your boat at all times, <laughs> Gerald. You have more spinning rods on the front deck yeah. than most people own. <laughs> well, I mean, and I would be risking all mine for his two whopper plopper rods. That's yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, and and you know he would cut the whopper ploppers off before you got the rods and reels, or is the tackle included in this? See, I think you should step it, it up. What, I, step it up and throw tackle in there, too. What's tied on is tied on. I mean, you can't just cut nothing off. When we do this, if we do grudge, <laughs> for rods, when, when, when you guys call time, whatever's tied on is his. It's his. You can't touch it. It's like pinks in a race car. If you lose, you lose. <laughs> All right, wow. Rod's real I mean, with what's tied on. Yeah, I'd go for that match. I mean, that's just one I'd have in mind. I wouldn't mind. I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but I wouldn't mind calling out some of them YouTube guys, would you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, would like to see hell, 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 Hang on. Hell, you got a million followers. You should be able to catch them. Let's go. <laughs> now, there's a, there's a couple I would be... I think I think he just called out the YouTubers. Did. Now there's a couple that I would be careful about because I mean you like you get into like the Matt Allen realm, and now you're dealing with the dangerous man, Gerald. Oh yeah, but there's some that I uh, yeah, yeah like there's to go some head that to head with you. you know you would too deep down inside, Matt. Matt, you know you'd like to go head to head with some of them. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh I'm dude, yeah, I'm yeah, on the same yeah, I'm on a, the same page. There's with you a there. piece of you that'd be like. I would I would body check your ass up on the glass, son, if you fish against <laughs> Maddie Matt. You would take them down and you know it. All right. Wow. All right. So if I mean, so <laughs> and let me ask you this, Gerald. If we called Watson, we're talking about James Watson. If we called Watson like during the show and and I throw the challenge out there from you, 
Are are you okay with that? I'm in. I'm in. I mean, and it's D. James Watson. See, if you refer to him like that, D. James Watson, he can't. I think it's going to get him. He can't back down. All right. Well, uh, you know. we'll make a cold call to Mr. Watson and see what he has to say here in a little bit. But I, I mean, I'm going to stay focused on my first match because this is the first ever time that you guys have ever doing this live. It's all new technology for yeah. what I'm, and this is new concept. I mean. The call out to me today. I haven't known about this deal, like the technology y'all have, but a few days. So, I mean, I'm pretty excited that, it, that people at home could actually sit and watch a grudge match with, uh, among friends. And that's what everybody's got to know. Wes and I fish a lot alike. Mm-hmm. We're both kind of junk fishermen. We both like to give each other a hard time, talk a little smack. But on the on the up and up, we know Wes can catch them. But it's going to give people at home in a three hour window to watch guys go head to head and try to make something happen. You know, and I think the first thing you got to realize is you could lose, Jeffrey. You could lose. Yeah. But you don't go into that match thinking that. You go into that match trying to fish your strength and for three hours do what you got to do. And, I mean, I've already been putting some thought into it. I mean, I think it's going to be fun. And where else can the fans watch that? Crystal clear, streaming. Yeah, you're quality. right. Quality. Three right. hours of snot slinging, whether you don't catch them, back lashing, dock skipping, pontoon hitting, hanging up. There's no edits, no cuts. It's the real deal. It's just, this is three hours of Let's Get It On. Like what? a long love song by Barry White. Let's <laughs> get it on. Wesley's only, Wesley's only stipulation was he wants to have a two-pound penalty for every curse word said live. Well, he'll be negative because, I, I mean, I, I'm going to have to find Jesus that day because he's going to be <laughs> negative. Wesley's going to say something. <laughs> Wow. All I mean, right. We, we can throw in an extra one for that if Wes wants to, but I look forward to it, guys. I mean, you guys do too. You know, we, you know, as we're laughing about that this morning, we're thinking about it. Where, where else can you go and have good fun and call people out and fish? You know, check your ego at the door. If you get beat, you get beat. But you know what? If you, if you crow that you're the best long enough, somebody's going to call you out, you know, and, and, and let's fish for it. I think uh, when you do it in that perspective, it's just three hours, only an hour and a half practice. There ain't much that one guy can do to get the advantage on the other guy. So it's going to be a true head-to-head format, and I'm kind of digging it. Cool, cool. All right, one quick question. Somebody on the instant feedback. uh, With the recent announcement, uh, you signing with uh, Rapala, they want to know, are you going to come out with any G colors? You know, we we, we talked about that briefly coming into this. and, And I can't tell you that it won't. I mean, I can't tell you this. If it happens, it would happen real fast. Uh, I can tell you this, that I've been sitting on a couple of lure ideas for one I've been sitting on for three years. And as I revealed it to one of the guys at Rapala, he said, it's truly the million-dollar idea. And he said, that's the stuff we want to work on. So I do know there will be future baits, but I would love to have some input in colors because some of the stuff that I've tweaked with, and Matt, you're very familiar with this guy, Dwayne Beatty, who paints out in Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. Dude, that guy's he's legit, and he's oh, yeah. done some custom colors for me that this straight, hands down, I think he's the best aftermarket painter in the business. But to be able to take some crawfish colors and really get that fine detail and stuff that they bite on the on the lake of those arcs, I hope that that's what uh, the future holds for me there at Rapala to be able to build and, and work with some of those colors. But it's a really cool company, it's a really cool brand, and it's like I told you, it's gonna be easy for most part because I've been throwing it since I was 18 years old. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's just something you know. In, in a shad wrap, a DT six, a DT ten, those are baits that's going to catch them just about everywhere you go. All right, very cool stuff, man. Very excited about the one on one live with uh, Swindle versus Strader. Mm-hmm. Good luck with that bumper. Don't hurt yeah. yourself. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm telling you guys, I'm knee deep in this thing. I mean, I look, I'm, I look more lost than an Alabama place kicker right now, son. I mean, I'm just walking around lost. I, I mean. And that kid was lost now. I mean, I'm just telling you. Pretty lost. All right, I dude. Think, I, think, I, think, I thank you guys for calling me today. I appreciate it. And yeah. keep me posted, Jeffers. And you, you tell Wes to tell Red to brush her teeth because I want some clean sugar on the cheek that day and a one big roll tide. I might even buy Wes with a roll tide shirt and ask you to put it on if I win. Wow. All right. This is going to be and good, I'm man. I'm up for punishment. If I lose, Jeffers, I'll take it. Whatever he brings, I'll take it. Okay. I'm going to be man up now. If he if he takes me down and beats me down like a redheaded stepchild, then I'll take the punishment. Bring it on, Wes. All right. There you have it. All right. Looking Ain't forward good to it, man. Orange. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks. Y'all have All a right. good one, man. See All right, y'all. man. See ya. All right. There you have it. <laughs>
Mr. Gerald Swindle. Everything's rolling pretty smooth so far. <laughs> we need to take a break, We need though. to take a break. We're going to come back with uh, Matt Florentino from AFTCO. Uh, it's a cool dude. And another another cool new kind of concept in yeah. the bass fishing world, the yeah. bass boot camp. And there's only a couple more weeks to sign up, so we'll get all the details for him. And if you are listening to this, if you're not currently on the Elite Series, I don't know if any of the Elite Series guys listen. Yeah, they do. Then you can oh, sign yeah. up for this. Yeah. And you can have a chance to get your open entry fees paid for. Yeah, cool stuff. All right, we'll be right back. The most versatile fishing machine on Earth. Unparalleled resolution and clarity. With more agility, lightning speed, and brute strength. HDS Carbon takes rapid response performance and screen technology to an all-new level. Maximized power. Maximized visibility. See Structure Scan 3D, new Dual Chirp Sonar, new Live Network Sonar, and more mapping options, all at the same time and faster than ever before. depend on hydraulic jack plates to get the best out of their boats. Do what they do. Demand Atlas performance. Atlas gets you from the bottom to the top in less than eight seconds, even with the big four strokes. And when you gotta turn right around and get that heavy load back up in rough water, Atlas's innovative design and American-made components will get you there with confidence. I'm Ot Depot. Just look for yourself. There's an Atlas jack plate on just about every professional's boat. The Atlas hydraulic jack plate. You can depend on it. My rods look different because they are different. Every rod is built by the pros and for the pros. When you pick up a white ducket fishing rod, you're getting a cutting edge rod, one that's truly pro driven with the actions you need for every bait category you fish. I put my name on it. It's my promise to build you a great rod you can count on. Ducket fishing, micro magic, macro magic, or white ice. Try them, they work. Gill that I've used for the last five years has been a far superior product than anything else on the market. The main thing that's really important to me is me being dry. I've been wearing Gill suits now for three years and never once have I gotten wet. The Lowrance Elite 7 Ti. Why does it lead the pack? It's simple. More bang for your buck. Use Elite 7 Ti with the all new Total Scan Transducer and you get all of your sonar from a single transducer install. That's broadband sounder, chirp sonar, side scan, and down scan imaging from one transducer. Now that's something to chirp about. Elite 7 Ti. Premium features have never been so affordable. I'm looking for signs before practice even starts. Crossing the bridge, I'm checking for current. Is the lake up or down? What's my water color? Bird activity tells me where the shad are before I ever launch my boat. <laughs> Sometimes the best things hit me right in the face. The pesky biffle bugs. There's always a hatch on your lake. Made in America by Jean LaRue Lures. Dang bug juice, it's everywhere. When I talk about Sunline, I think of one word, confidence. Sunline FX2 is what I use for all of my frogging and flipping. SX1 braid, which braid plays a little big part in, uh, in fishing line. Shooter, I'm going to use in those close quarter deals, like flipping and pitching. One of my favorite techniques in fishing the tournament trail is to fish offshore ledges. We have taken the, the questions out of the equation. Take my word for it. It works. It works, dude. All right, we are back in studio, Mark and Matt, wrapping up the week on a Thursday. And uh, this next thing, man, jam-packed show. Mm -hmm. This next feature, uh, pretty cool stuff. Very, yeah. very cool. And uh, we're going to run this video. You kind of set it up at the beginning of the show, but uh, AFCO getting involved now in freshwater, and they are going to have an opportunity for somebody to showcase their skills. 
and then I think get their entry fees for the opens paid for and yeah. kind of kind of give them a jump start that they need. And it's all through a one minute uh, YouTube video uh, to kind of get it started. So we've got that video queued up and then we'll bring in uh, Matt Florentino, who is uh, not catching calico bass in California <laughs> currently. But uh, if you see the promo banner, we'll be asked about it shortly after this video is over. So go ahead and run the Big Daddy promo with Russ Lang. Yeah. All right, here we go. Hey guys, the folks at AFCO are giving away a unique opportunity, one that I never had when trying to make the Elite Series. They're giving away full entry fees and expenses paid for a full division of the Bassmaster Opens, all while showcasing your journey in a YouTube series that documents the life and times of an up and coming pro, you. The best part about this is open to anyone. It doesn't matter if you're a weekend warrior, college angler, or the local hammer. It's all up for grabs. Whoever can explain why we should pick you in a video that is 60 seconds or less. Show us what you got. Show us what it takes. All you got to do is register at the link below and carefully follow the instructions on how to enter. And maybe we'll see you in the Elite Series. All right, we welcome in Matt Florentino with AFCO live via Skype. Matt, for, thanks for taking time out, man. Morning, guys. Stoked to be on here with you guys. Very, very cool. And uh, Russ Lane did an outstanding job with that. I was just thinking that. Yeah. You don't know how I've done stuff with Russ to get that in one take. Had to, I mean, Ru that was smooth, some smooth talking by Mr. Yeah. Lane. You know, like, Russ is so good. When I sent him that script, you never really know what you're going to get. I was like, dude, that was, like, to the T, on point, like, styling. Very, so, yeah. very good. Very good. All right, why don't you go into a little bit more detail about what you guys are doing with Bass Boot Camp? Yeah, so Bass Boot Camp, it's a unique thing. Um, I mean, you guys might have seen some of the, the press stuff we just put out with our launch in Freshwater. Um, but Bass Boot Camp, we've been working on some different programs and – try to bring something new to the table for freshwater bass so with boot camp we're giving a you know an open angler the opportunity to get all their entry fees paid their expenses paid travel um all the things that require you to go on tour fish in the opens um we're going to get behind them give them a sponsorship with our gear our clothing um and also document the whole thing uh with the new youtube series so really cool so you're kind of getting both aspects of on tour um everything throughout the year life and times good and bad you know practice you name it uh it'll be a cool deal so when can you how does the a listener or viewer of bass talk live get involved with this because i mean this is the core audience of the guys who uh who want to do the youtube video and and have this opportunity yeah it's really easy go to afco.com forward slash boot camp um there's a little application form there fill out all your information um, the one thing we do require, though, is a short 60-second video. That's your 60 seconds to really, you know, um, show us what you got, show us who you are. Um, obviously, getting creative and uh, really, really making impressions key. So, guys, to jump right on there and go ahead and do that. The only thing, though, is a short time period. There's, uh, you have until January 26, I believe. Um, we just want to get somebody in before the Open's really gets going so can you talk about some of the ones that you've received so far if you got some good ones in matt we got we got a couple um they're pretty good so there's you know a lot of different things he's, a lot of different he's guys got some great ones that he doesn't want to say anything <laughs> he has got some absolute gems that he is thinking of right now but he's being the professional and he's yeah. not he's he's, he's so, not saying anything i mean and we just launched so we're gonna let some kind of come through and once we get some that re uh, really stand out we'll uh make our selection and put that out for everybody to see so Awesome. Right. What about the selection process? How's that going to work? You know, the, the one thing, there's a few requirements. You know, a guy's got to be committed to fishing all the opens. Um, he must he, ha he has to have his own boat, um, his own rig. And from there, just, you know, the one other requirement is being able to film, um, document it all, and then edit it. We'll, we'll obviously help help guys out if need be. We got our own bumpers and stuff. But, uh, yeah, we'll really just see what we get um we'll take a look at the guy see you know look at some of his history who else you know some of his track record and obviously more of a character is always key so um it, it'll be fun so afco's been around forever over 60 years uh Correct. what was the kind of decision behind making the big push into freshwater now 
You know, we've, yeah, like you said, we've been around since 58. Um, we're celebrating our 60th anniversary this year. Um, we've, we've been pretty much 100% saltwater up until um, this past January. We've, you know, we've been wanting to get in freshwater bass, seeing the opportunities there. Um, our product we make is, you know, technical performance fishing clothing. Um, it was more geared towards saltwater, but really at the end of the day, we're fishermen and we're in the elements, you're in the sun, you're dealing with rain, water, spray. So, you know, we, we have all those products for, for the bass fishermen now. Um, three years ago, we uh, started working, you know, we kind of just dipped our toes into bass fishing. We started working with Jared Littner. Um, we started working with Scott Martin um, last year, and they've been really instrumental, you know, with feedback on, you know, having the right items in the line, um, getting the product right. Uh, and then one of our, our one of our sales reps in Florida, he linked us up, uh, Louie, he linked us up with Mike Bowser from OB Group, OBT Group, um, mm -hmm. and we've just really put together a go-to-market this past year or so, um, and we're just really excited to launch it all this year. So we really want to bring something unique, something different um, with our conservation first twist. So uh, I know conservation is a hot topic in bass right now, uh, more pushed towards that. You know, we saw that from the outside looking in and felt it's the right time for us to come in and do some really cool things with conservation, getting getting involved with different groups around the country, all the key lakes. Um, and, you know, a lot of people talk about it, but really bring some actionable things um, to conservation for bass. So. You mentioned it real quick. You said Scott Martin. You also have, uh, and I think that's on the Freshwater page at all, the Fish with Scott Martin. Yeah, we, we launched that one in, uh, a little while ago. So we'll, we have that one running too. So we're running a contest uh, for guys. Uh, check out that. It's right on the website, afco.com uh, forward slash bass. And you'll see a Scott, Scott Martin promo banner. Um, we're giving somebody the opportunity to go fish with Scott. Um, I'm thinking of Okeechobee, um, Scott's home waters, and that'd be a cool deal, you know. And Scott, too, his whole following with his YouTube channel and his TV show. So once they fish with Scott, they'll be able to get on the um, get on his YouTube channel, fish with Spinner Worm, um, yeah, do a, the whole deal. So. Brandon's made that famous. I yeah. ran a story on uh, Brandon, who's his <laughs> cameraman. Remember, I just I yeah. cold call. I sent him a message on Instagram and was like, dude, I want to do a story on you because you're not in the fishing industry, and now you film all this stuff for Scott full-time. What are your thoughts on it? So it turned out to be a really good story. Yeah. Uh, dude, I want to know about the their calico bass, right? <laughs> Like yeah. so, so let me get quick little background. I said I talked to uh, Matt yesterday to get this set up, and I'm like, dude, send me some photos of you so I can put you on the banner so we can have you on. And he sends me these badass looking fish. They're cool looking. And I kind of looked it up a little bit, but what is the deal with those? And how do you catch those? I mean, they're I mean, do do they are they like bass? They're they're really they're exactly like bass. And the way we call it, um, we say a bass is a bass is a bass. Um, the, salt, the saltwater fish we catch off our coast, I think they're only, they only live south of Santa Barbara, Point, uh, Point Conception, down into central Mexico. So it's a really small area that you can catch them. Um, but that's kind of my bread and butter over here. We fish from small um, center console boats, you know, rangers and really rig like bass boats. We fish real similar gear. Like, you know, you'd say your, your swim bait gear, something you'd fish a Huddleston with or someone like that. Um, fishing in shallow, shallow water and kelp beds, fish like flipping pads and different sorts of things like that. Um, but it's a lot of fun. And that's what I was probably most excited about with our venture into bass is um, I'm pretty much, I consider myself more so a bass fisherman than an offshore guy and um, being able to get involved and uh, fish with the elite guys and the pro team and work with them has been a lot of fun. Because um, really what we do for Calicos is just bass fishing on steroids, you know, eight foot heavy rods, 80 pound braid. 50 pound leader, um, wow. swim in a weedless swim bait through the kelp, and that's yeah, fun. It's awesome. That's on my bucket bucket list of things to do. Hey. If you're ever in Southern California, we're happy to get you out there. <laughs> hey, it's really, really cool. All right, real quick on the instant feedback Joe in Boston wants to know uh, the centrals, do you get to pick whether it's the, the, or the opens, whether it's the central or the eastern? It's really open to any division, really. It's kind of just dependent on the entries and who we think is the best guy. So, yeah, from any division, really, it's open to anybody. And this is a, a YouTube video. I mean, it doesn't have to be a, a fully rendered and produced, edited, high-quality video. I mean, you can take your, your cell phone and have a YouTube account, and if, if it's something that you or whoever the selection process sees is, is as deems the best one, yeah. that's the one that gets it. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah, guy doesn't need to really stress about, you know, a uh, a whole full-on production, but just me able to film, you know, who you are, what you do, what you're about, what your plans are. Um, that's all you really need to do. So cell phone, perfectly fine. Um, cell phones nowadays are pretty good. So, yeah. 
All good. All right, very cool. Now, I have a couple of questions for Matt. One is personal. Okay. Oh, on is my it? part. When I was a little kid, I grew up in Long Beach. All right? I oh, grew cool. up in, in, in Santa Monica and Long Beach. And when I was a kid, my dad and his best friend took us to the kelp beds that were right off of the LAX runway or landing strip or takeoff or whatever where the big smokestacks are. You know what yep. I'm talking yep. about? Yep. Back in El Segundo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do they still catch fish and are those kelp beds still there around that area in that area the kelp beds are more so around palos verdes or north of there around malibu or so okay um, but there's a little stretch right outside of that zone that's a little bit of a honey hole um and where i've done some damage so but yeah still they're still there I still live there uh, i don't even know if you could still fish there now with all the regulations on the airport and stuff you said but, la right there? yeah Okay. Yeah, but back in the day, you could you could sit there and see these 747s take off right yeah. above you while you're out there trying to catch fish. It's crazy. There's a good reef right there that you're talking about. So, yep, there's, it's, you can still fish there. There's no regulations. How, fishing, how long does so. it take to tow a boat through L.A.? <laughs> um, well, here, so here's the thing. I live in the South Bay, which is right near LAX, that little area. Yeah. Um, so if you're trying to get, I don't know, 10 miles from somewhere, it could take anywhere from... 10 minutes to 45 minutes or an hour. So with a boat in tow and people not too nice with you going down the 405 freeway, it, it could get tough sometimes. But, you know, it's one of the things you just learn to deal with and no one traffic's bad and you just just get up and go. That's probably worse than towing a bass boat through Atlanta. Yeah, it's I mean, because that's the equivalent. Like, literally, yeah. when you go through Atlanta, if you're with someone, you pull over at a rest area, you take your five-hour energy, yeah. you look each other in the eyes and say, you ready for this? Yeah. And then you go <laughs> for it. Okay, now this one, this next one's kind of crazy, but Matt knew nothing yeah. about this. Have you ever been to a grunion run? I have been to a grunion run, yes. All right. Explain to Matt, because I couldn't do it. Explain to Matt what the <laughs> grunion run is. Okay, so grunion, they're, they're this uh, – this bait fish we have inshore here, um, different types of the year, usually on a full moon or a new moon, um, in their spawning season, you'll come out around midnight or whatever the tide is, it depends on the tides. Yeah. Um, and people come up, they show up and just, you know, you'll kind of wait and out of nowhere, you'll just see all these fish, hundreds and thousands of grunion come up on the beach. They sit up in the sand and that's actually where they spawn is right there in the sand. On um, dry land? On the sand. On dry land. Yeah. Really wild. Yeah. What do they, I mean, do they look like? fish or animals <laughs> it, it, it looked like you know like it's probably like, i don't know if you guys have smelt up in your area it just looks kind of like a smelt uh, really? like a bait fish so what do you do so scoop them up fish. and go home and just saute them some fry them up do. some people do. most people just most people just come check it out um for me I, I mark those dates on my calendar those are the best days to go fish either that night or the day or the morning after um, oh because they're out just kind of set up. gorging on the grunions yeah yeah, and the calico bass will come up right up in those little shallow reef edges. They'll set up right there. As those things move in and out, you just, you know, you could get some good ones. So, It's cool. If you're in California and the grunion are running, you need to go check it out, Matt. What are you it's, just it's wild. <laughs> it makes no sense. That's just what they do. That's nature. <laughs> it's very, very cool. All right. Uh, are you going to be attending any of the Elite Series events this year, Matt? I won't. I, I might try to. I, um, I'm, I'm going to try to make it to the Classic, but we'll have staff definitely at a lot of, a lot of the events. Um we got a lot of different. We're actually doing ten tournaments this year as well. We have ten opens, um, so we're going to be at quite a few of them, like the Spro, um, the Spro Frog Tournament. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, we're, we're actually doing an open, um, uh, Cabela's Collegiate Bass Open next October too. That we're um, we're going to be hosting. That's with um, uh, so. Wade Middleton. Yeah, exactly. And his group. Yeah, they. Uh, I actually fished those. Oh, a decade ago. <laughs> <laughs> He's so, dating himself. So, yeah, you guys will see us quite a bit this year. We're pretty excited. We're doing, yeah, we got 10, 10 open tournaments at, you know, all the key lakes. Um, you know, I'll mention, too, we, uh, with our conservation programs, we, we got some pretty cool things. We're, we're uh, creating a, a bass bus, a live release um, system that we're actually going to house at Chickamauga. Um, so that's going to be a cool deal. We're going to bring that around for different events, uh, with different clubs trying to help out just to make sure – um you know fish get released the right way um so we got a lot of things going on um some haven't really been officially announced just yet if you look on our page on our conservation page you'll see some of the things um you know kind of a preview of what we got going on um but yeah we'll we'll, we'll be out there this year so we're excited i got one more question all right how different are the bass guys 
from the saltwater guys. Because I was just down in Florida and stuff, and there just seemed there's a different vibe between the two, it seems. But obviously bonded together with the love of fishing and water and yeah. things like that. But uh, you're you mean you're a saltwater guy who also enjoys freshwater fishing. Is there a different vibe between the two guys that, that you guys are trying to, to kind of put your finger on uh, to find their, your niche in the market? You know, they're, they're different to some degree, but in many ways they're really the same. And as far as the needs for clothing, mm -hmm. it might vary by region. You know, if a guy in the southeast or a guy in the, um, up in the north um, or the Midwest or, you know, Southern California. Um, but there's different, you know different needs and wants, but the product is pretty much the same at the end of the day. It might just change in prints and colors and different things. Um, but I'd say, you know, at the end of the day, we're all the same guy and we just need something to keep us comfortable, warm and protected. So there you go. Very nice. There's definitely a mindset though that could vary, you know, as far as if a guy's, you know, we're pretty much catch and release or if a guy's mm -hmm. just bringing home, uh, food home for the table. But other than that, I mean, I think we're all the same guy. Some just might be a little more saltier at the end of the day, but <laughs> So that, that, that could be in fresh water as well. So, All right, I have to ask. We'll, we'll wrap things up with this. Uh, coolest place that you've been to, and, and, and what fish would you really, really prefer to go out and, and try and catch if you had the opportunity to? Oh, man. My bucket list is deep of things I still need to do before I die, but my favorite place that I've been to th this so far is um, Sia Cortez in Baja. Um, it's... Um, on the inland side of the Pacific, there's this fish we catch called a cabrilla. Uh, it's basically a grouper, um, like guys, like the gag groupers guys catch in Florida, uh -huh. but it's called a, a leopard grouper. Um, and we catch them in really shallow water, throwing big hard baits, like a 200 millimeter size jerk bait, surface iron, and they pull really hard. It's it's pretty ridiculous. We fish, you know, I'll fish like eight foot swim bait rod with like a big, uh, big swim bait size reel, 80 or 100 pound braid, 120 pound titanium wire it's pretty it's <laughs> it's tim it's tim the tool man taylor um heavy on everything but they're so fun to catch um i can send you guys some photos to check them out they look like just big bass they're just big grouper um and what i like about it is real similar to our calico fishery but you know they start at anywhere from eight pounds and get up to 20 something pounds wow yeah and they when they bite they they don't try to pull the guys say, Oh, I'll try to pull the rod out of my hands. They try to pull you in the water. It's it's serious. Wow. <laughs> what about rooster fish? Rooster okay, the rooster fish are in that zone too. Yeah. Rooster fish you'll you'll catch in the surf. Um, they'll come up in real shallow water and, and guys they uh, fish from from the beach or from a boat. Um, you'll catch them fishing like big, big, big poppers and big top water top water baits. Um, or they'll fish live live bait. Um, but real cool fish. They come up really hot, get yeah. all lit up, and they have these really cool rooster long hair don't care back fins um <laughs> they come in through the water and shh, yeah. super fun my buddy caught one of them and then he didn't make another cast the rest of the day he literally pulled a muscle fighting it oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and he had to like go get surgery when he got back those fish in baja they're serious they encourage you that's that's a real deal i mean yeah but so but you're obviously into the big bass too and i mean it's, you've mentioned huddleston a couple times and talk about that so i mean you're you yeah. live in like the money spot because you get to throw the big stuff for those big largies down there you know i try i put my time in i'm not as successful as some of the other guys um i kind of carry that approach to calico bass what i do um but i try yeah i mean I, honestly i i it's kind of funny so our office we're in uh, orange county california um i probably fish freshwater bass more than i do saltwater bass every, every, every lunch i go fish this little pond down the street and try to pluck one i chuck my big swim baits you know just, you know, throw it away all the way across the pond and try to catch a big one, but it's fun. Hey, real quick, uh, Josh in Missouri on the Instant Feedback, he's got a great idea. You know, we're, we're yeah. launching this new thing one-on-one -on -one live. He says, why don't you have a saltwater guy go one-on-one -on -one with a professional bass guy, do one day on freshwater and one day on saltwater? It's not a bad that idea. Sounds, that yeah. sounds really cool. Not bad at all. Yeah, I like that. Very good, Josh. All right, Matt, anything else, man, that you'd like to uh, pass along? Yeah, I would just say, guys, check us out. We just launched everything. It's all live on the website, athgo.com forward slash bass. Um, go check out the Bass Boot Camp. We got the pro team up there. So, I mean, we're really pumped on our pro team. We got some real hammers. Um, we got also the Scott Martin promo. Um, we're also looking for field staff, guys. You'll find a link on there for our field staff. So we're looking to grow 
um, you know, with some field staff members. So guys that might not be fishing the opens might not be able to do the boot camp. You know, they could still get involved and apply for our field staff. Um, and also, we just launched an Instagram account at AFCO Freshwater. So go give us a follow. Um, we'll just be pumping a bunch of content through there, um, through our website, and sign up for an email list. And yeah, just really stay up to date. So, but we're, we're really excited. It's been something we're working on for for some time, and um, I feel like just the time's right for us coming in and um, getting involved with Freshwater. So, all right, very cool, man. Thanks for taking time out. Hey, you are welcome anytime, man. Mark, Matt, thank you guys. If you guys are in California and want to pull one of those bass, give me a shout. We'll happy to get you out. All right, thanks, all right, dude. I'm all over that. All right, man, take care. Cool. All right, you guys. There you have it. Very, very cool stuff from AFCO coming out. And uh, I would really like to see some of those videos too. Yeah. I, some of the ones that don't make it. I remember they, <laughs> there were some very interesting ones back, oh, in 2011, 2012 for that World Series of Bass, the Dream yeah. reality show. Yeah. There were some gems that were that were published out right. there, but great show so far. Should we call Watson just out yeah, of the blue? Yeah, call him up. We got we're one for one with Swindle. I, I'm really curious what, he, and I have no idea if I'm going to be able to get a hold of him. I think I have his number in here. You have. You should okay, have I everybody's I number. It. I got it. He's going to be. It's in my law. He's going to be upset that it's under his name and not JMFW, but. <laughs> What did Swindle say you had to call him? The James Watson? The James Watson. Uh, let's see here. Now, if he doesn't know we're live, we might be in trouble. With well, I, him yeah, we're going to have to tell him. <laughs> He's probably cold up there, Lake of the Ozarks. All right, let's see here. What was Swindle's stipulation? He wanted all tackle. It's Watson. Oh, he just went with uh, the last name. James. Hey, it's Mark and Matt, dude. You are live, so I just want to give you that oh. uh, notification. Oh, my gosh. Thanks for the disclosure. <laughs> Otherwise, if I'd known, I would say JMFW Worldwide. That's generally how I answer my phone. That's what I said. You're <laughs> in Mark's phone as James Watson. I said he's going to be pissed if he finds out that the JMFW is not what you're under. Yes, please change that immediately on your settings. <laughs> All right, man, it has been a jam-packed show, and uh, I'm glad I got a hold of you, but uh, we, we made the announcement today, and I don't know if you've seen it on the Bass Zone. We have this new feature called One-on-One -on -One Live, and our first match is going to be... Oh, oh, oh yes, I am. All right, it's going to be Gerald Swindle versus Wesley Strader, and we had them both on today, and then I asked Swindle, I said, if there was a dream grudge match, who would, who would you want to go up against? And guess whose name came up? It better have been mine. It better have been. It, it was. Because but he knows. <laughs> it's kind of a, a unique challenge, though. He wants to it, – it's kind of like pink slips. He wants to go to battle one-on-one -on -one live with you for your – All your rods. Your rods. And reels and, and whatever's and, tied on. Yeah. Rods, reels, and what I got tied on them? Yeah. Yes. Yes. What is it? Okay, I'm very sure that I'll beat him anyway, so I would get to win his too? Yes. yes. Okay, so I know my sponsorship deals are solid <laughs> in my career, unlike his. Oh. And I will gladly accept this challenge knowing that I will put him out of business because he won't have any rods and reels to fish with. Wow. So you accept his challenge? I accept his challenge. I encourage his challenge. <laughs> now, you also want to know what he said. He said that he's putting more on the line because if he wins, all he's going to get is two rods with braid and whopper ploppers because that's all you throw. Oh! Oh, that's fine. That's a compliment because he knows that I can whip that ass with this, those two rods and reels, and he wants to touch it. He wants to touch them. <laughs> he does. I'm going to let him rub all up on them. He ain't going to win them, but I want to let him rub on it a little bit. And maybe, maybe, maybe he can improve his fishing career. I don't know. Wow. He needs improvement. Wow. All right. So, so you're in. Yeah. You're in. All right. I'm he's in. in. I'm he, in. He, he's All we got to do. For rods, reels, and whatever, whatever's tied on. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got I it. really hope it's like I a Roman-made swim bait bite. <laughs> I hope you guys. Oh I hope the only thing you can catch him on is a negotiator. You got eight negotiators on the front deck for about three grand. <laughs> about ninety-five dollars a piece. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, well we're gonna have it, to it, we're gonna have to work out the logistics, time, place, location. But I I will work on that. Absolutely. And uh, we will make this happen. Man, that sounds. You know what? It's gonna be a good time. Good time. Or, or and is this a day long event? Or you see this one? Because I know he's kind of a pansy, and I don't know if he can handle a full day on the water with me. No, it's gonna be it's gonna be the basic rules that we have set up. It will be a standard one on one live. You get an hour and a half practice, an hour and a half first half, an hour and a half second half, MLF style total weight over the two halves. We have a winner, and somebody gets a lot of fishing tackle, rods and reels. Okay, uh, I got one more on the uh-oh. Oh, you're He's breaking in the, up. He's you're in, in the, the Ozarks. No, you're in the no-sell zone of the Ozarks, dude. <laughs> Sounds like he's on the move. <laughs> yeah. Is he coming back? I don't know. We got in one. Yeah. I'm <laughs> He's gone. We got to end it. Oh, Lord. Oh. <laughs> Are you back, man? Are you up on the hill? No. Oh yeah, you're better now. Wood. You're better now. Okay. Okay. Uh, I want to add to the challenge that he has to fill my boat up regardless. With gas. Yes. <laughs> regardless of the winter. Okay. Because okay. I'm not going to go in here and going to improve his uh, social media following with my presence <laughs> without getting paid. Okay, man. Now, if there was a body of water that you would like to have this event on, what would it be? Uh, we'll take Rock Lake because I don't want to have to drive and waste my gas money going to his pond. James all about the gas today. Man. He's all about that gas money. Yeah. You know it. I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready to set out on a venture that's going to cost him about $14,000 worth this year. What, what? Can you talk about it? What are you talking about? Yeah, the about? FLW Tour. Oh, I thought it was something the else. Tour, dude. Yeah. Well, I, I okay. knew that here's that was going to Here's happen. an idea, James. We, okay. w- you pick five fisheries that are between uh, the Ozarks and Alabama, and Swindle will pick five okay. fisheries between the Ozark and Alabama. Yeah. You will send it in to us, and on Bass Talk Live, we will cut it up, we will put them in a bowl, and we will randomly draw one of those fisheries, and that's where it goes down. All right, then. Fair enough. You good with that? Yep. Uh, yep. All right. All right. This is outstanding. Very, very good stuff. Would you would you mind to go ahead just in case there's some catastrophic failure in between now and then that he'll go ahead and send me about ninety three dollars just to fill my truck and boat up one time? <laughs> As a down payment for the As a down payment, yeah, because you know, I'm I mean, I don't want to waste my time here. Man, he is all so. about the gas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, just throw that at him. I mean, it can't hurt to ask. He, he, you know, he picked up a new sponsor. I'm sure Rapala's paying him two, three hundred dollars a month. <laughs> so that's cold hearted. We can't call him now because he's literally wrestling a bumper. He's working on his vehicle. What? See again, a man of his stature and his career that's just inundated with trophies and Angler of the Year titles, and he has to fix his own damn bumper. Come on, people. What does that say about <laughs> Gerald Swindle? All right. This is going to be good, Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be good. All right, man. Hi, I, hey, All I didn't right. even ask. Are you doing okay, James? I just kind of jumped right in there. Everything no, he's not. Okay? He needs gas money. <laughs> he I doesn't even have gas money, money man. I'm doing okay. I'm going to find me a Love's truck port around here and have to perform favors just to fill my truck up. <laughs> Pick up trash, that is, around the, you know, the truck stop. Wow. <laughs> Dude, you are one of a it's kind. Come to that. One of a kind, man. This, one of a kind. And the freaking season hasn't even started, boys. And you're picking up cans already? Already. <laughs> already. <sighs> all right, man. What's that say about about the fishing business nowadays and sponsorship it's deals? All, it's Come all on good. Now. It's all good, James. It it's is, all good. It's it all is good. all good. Just out here hustling up my next great sponsor. That's all. That's all you need. All right. Just keep them coming yep. in. All right. Email yep. email us or text Matt or text me the five lakes and, and we'll see what we can get worked out. And then I will I will put together a schedule 
that seems to work out for both of you guys and give you multiple dates, and we'll make this thing happen. Perfect. Sounds great. All right, Watson. Go fill your truck up, man. Go get some gas. Oh, all right. All right. Thanks, guys. See all ya. Right. See ya. See ya. All right. There you have it, James Watson. <clears throat> Are we is, already? We're already at an hour and a half on the show. Close to it. Wow. Wow. All right. So there we have it. Quite the show there. Good stuff from uh, Wesley. We had Wesley Strader at the oil chain, oil and lube and tire <laughs> place. We had uh, Gerald, Gerald Swindle trying to put a bumper on. <laughs> he had a wrestling contest with his bumper. We had Matt from SoCal. Yeah. And then we had uh, James Watson from somewhere in the <laughs> Ozark. <laughs> from an Ozark. Mention about gas. James Watson from an Ozark truck stop. Yeah. Picking up cans. Quite the show. All right. Uh, what do we have lined up for Tuesday? I haven't even thought about it. Dude, big, huge announcement on Tuesday. A mystery guest that we will announce on Sunday night. You're going to throw the promo banner out there on Sunday night. Oh, yeah. I have thought about it. Yeah. You just, it's all right. We got a lot going on That's here. That's Tuesday. That is Tuesday. Oh, that'll be a good show. Going to be a great show. Uh, we Would kinda, you say it'll shake up the industry? I think it will. Uh, it will shake some stuff up. It has nothing to do with us. No. Let's throw that out there. It has nothing to do with what we're doing, or it has something to do with the guests that we're going to have on Tuesday. <clears throat> Big name. Yep. Cool. Big name. Yeah, so uh, you, you can got, put, you got the you can put the little, fired up for that? Yeah. You can put the little uh, question, promo banner, just put a question mark. mark, and then on Sunday night, you will post who the guest is on, uh, on Tuesday. Actually, Monday. Let's do it Monday. Keep the question mark up through the weekend. Okay. And then uh, we'll post it Monday evening or okay. Monday afternoon or something like that. I don't know. We'll These are logistics we could do off air, Mark. Yeah. Uh, I want to I thank everybody on the instant feedback. Great stuff today. A lot of people watching. And uh, once again, uh, if you get a chance, if you are listening to the replay on iTunes, please make sure you leave a review for us and rate BTL on iTunes for us. Good, bad, or indifferent. Just uh, give us your thoughts. And uh, 2018 is going to rock, dude. I'm very, very excited. Very excited about the one-on-one live stuff and uh, all the other things that we have going on with the Bass Zone. Yep. And all the right. season starts soon. Dave and I will be at every Elite Series stop again. Dude, I was looking at that. This is the uh, – this is my 10th – or. Uh, so Ninth year or tenth year out there. It's your tenth anniversary. I think so. I started going in two thousand eight. Oh, we're gonna have to get uh, some shirts. Full time two thousand nine. Oh, one so other thing, real quick. Uh, in case everybody is wondering, we mentioned we're gonna have six matches. Hopefully, within the next two weeks. Hopefully, next week we'll be able to announce the remainder of the matches that we have on the schedule for twenty eighteen. For the one on one live. For the one on one live, there were uh, a couple people on the instant feedback. We're asking, hey, who else are we going to have? Yeah, and if you're listening to the iTunes podcast, yeah. go to BassZone.com. Top of the tabs, you will see it's right next to BassZone, Bass Talk Live, one-on-one -on -one live. Click on it yeah. and find out all about it. Watch the uh, kind of a summary of the first one that we did with uh, yeah. Hallman and Sean Goodwin. And uh, as the matches are announced, that is also where they will be updated with the schedule of who, what, when, and where. And I think yep. we also need to have a tab next to it that says what they're fishing for. Good point. Good point. All right. I want to thank Matt Florentino with AFCO once again for taking time out to be on. Wesley Strader, Gerald Swindle, and the James Watson for being on the show today. Everybody be safe. Stay warm. We will see you on Tuesday. <laughs>